Alright guys, how's it going? So I had an interesting conversation on Twitter today and it reminded me of Adaptive Subdivision. Now I've covered this before but I thought might as well tart it up a little bit while I'm here. Plus there's a user on Facebook wanting a tutorial, so you know me, I like to deliver to my fans. <laughs> now I'm actually going to use JS placement to generate the height map and the colour map. Now I've used this a lot of times, it's excellent for doing things like greebles and set dressing. And it's available for free, I'll put the link in the description down below. And if you've never used it, it's pretty damn cool to be honest. So you essentially have a few different options. I usually use version 2. And you can see here we can quickly generate a displacement map and the crab pack is usually the best. <laughs> so you can play around with these values, you can use custom sprites for example. You save out the height map, if you would like to colour it, toggle colourizer. It gives you a few options for colour and all you do is save the colour out. It's so cool, great application. So we'll quickly jump into a blender and in traditional fashion we'll delete the default cube. And I'm going to add in a ground plane so I'll press shift and A and we'll add in a plane. Now in order to use adaptive subdivision you need to use cycles and you need to use the experimental version. So if you go into the render settings here we'll change the render engine to cycles. Feature set will change this to experimental. Now I'm actually going to keep this on CPU at the moment because I'm recording and that's us pretty much set up. I'll select the plane, I'll go into the modifiers and I'll add in a subdivision surface. And you can see here we now have an option for adaptive subdivision. So I'll make this simple so it keeps it a square and that's us pretty much ready. Now the Dyson scale you can play around with, generally one pixel is fine, 0 0.5 maybe, but if you actually go into the render settings here you can see here we now have an option called subdivision. So we can change the Dyson rate of the render and I'm going to make that 0 0.5 and I'll put the maximum subdivisions up to 16. Now that's will increase the render time just a little bit but should be fine for this example. And then I'll jump into the shading tab. So let me quickly join these together so you don't see my files. <laughs> and I'm going to apply a new material. Now one thing you need to keep in mind is a lot of users forget about this is if you go into the material settings, scroll down, you can see here settings, displacement is set to bump only. So we need to change this to displacement only. You could have it displacement and bump, but we'll leave it displacement only at the moment. And all we need to do is quickly set up a displacement texture. Now, if you've done this before, you're pretty much set up. What I'm going to do here is, I'll press Shift and A, S to search, add in an image texture. I'll then add in a displacement node, so I'll search for displacement. We'll take the colour from this and we'll plug this into the height. And we'll take the displacement and we'll plug this into displacement. Pretty self-explanatory to be honest, nice and easy. Now, as an additional step, you might want to drop down a texture coordinate node and a mapping node. And we'll do this just for a giggle, why not? We don't necessarily need it because, well, we're using a plane. But hey, you never know when you might actually need it. So I'm going to actually just use the generated, I'll plug this into the vector, I'll take the vector and I'll plug this into the image, and I'm going to open the image that I saved from JS placement. So it's the seamless one, we'll scroll in, and there we go. Now I'm going to control the mid level, it's a little bit high, so maybe 0 0.1, I'm going to control the scale, otherwise it's going to be massive, and I'm going to drop this down to maybe 0 0.15, that should be fine. And I'm going to hit F12 and we're just going to take a quick look at the render. So we now know the displacement is working. Now the camera view is a bit crap, so I'm going to jump into layout. I'm going to just do it in the viewport. I'll hit Control, Alt and Numpad 0. That should set the camera up for us perfectly. I'll jump back into the shading tab and I'm going to add in a colour map. Now we need to kind of organise the nodes a little bit here. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this one. I'll paste it in here. I'll take the vector. I'll plug it in here. And we'll use the colour map that we exported. And we'll plug this into the base colour. And you can see here, we're now getting this colorized displacement. Now there's one thing that Ducky 3 d done in one of his tutorials and it looked absolutely phenomenal. Is he added in an emission channel with a mix shader. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to add in an emission. I'm going to set the color to something like maybe red. And I'm going to put the strength up to about 30. And then I'm going to add in a mix shader. And what we'll do here is, we'll mix the principal shader here with the emission shader. We'll then plug this back into the surface. Now obviously we're getting blowout for the emission channel. Hey hey! 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to branch off the image, I'm going to add in a colour ramp and I'll plug this into the factor. So we need to drop down a colour ramp. We'll take the colour, plug this in here and then we'll plug this into the factor and when I squeeze the black values we end up getting this nice emission channel and when I hit F12 it's a really cool effect and using things like adaptive subdivision just, oh, it's just good to play with. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, support me in Gumroad so I can buy a new GPU. <laughs> you know what to do, take care.